Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, November 18th, and time just keeps flying by. Um, I filmed last week, I believe, on Tuesday, and yet it feels like it's been forever <laughs> since I filmed. <clears throat> um, a lot has happened. I've been really busy, and I haven't gotten the stitching done that I was hoping for just because, you know, things were busy. So, <clears throat> um, I'll show you what I did get to do and what I am planning for this coming week. And I guess that's where we'll go. So, a couple admin things. Well, not a couple. I have something, an admin thing to do. <laughs> so, I have signed up to do a sale on, on Etsy with their Cyber Week promotion that they're going to have. So, starting next Tuesday, the 26th, through... The following Tuesday, December 3rd, I'll have all of my PDF patterns 20% off. And there's no code necessary, they'll just be on sale. So that'll be... I'm not having other things on sale just because I want to make sure that I don't get flooded with re personal requests um, of like made-to-order things and personalized items and stuff. So all the PDFs that are instant downloads, those are the things that I'm including in the sale. So I thought I would give you a heads up now because who knows, I'm hoping to come back next week to film at the beginning of the week. My kids will be home, but I usually am still able to figure things out um, to film when it's just them home. So, but you never know. <laughs> so uh, in case I can't come back to film early next week, um, there's a heads up. I'll have a sale in my Etsy shop starting next Tuesday on November 26th. So, um, and I'll mention that again in the next video since it'll be almost upon us at that point. Um, and my Etsy shop is Stitchin' Mommy also, just like my channel name, in case you didn't know. And I have temperature patterns and a few other things that are mostly text-based um, things that I like to design. So, um, I guess let's get into it. I had, as I recall, um, mentioned to you that I was going to have a lot of haul arriving on Tuesday, and I did. I managed to make it to my local needle workshop, which is actually a needle point store. They have like one basket of cross stitch patterns, but the main thing I like them for is for their threads. So I have kitted up some cross stitch things there with the fancy floss that they have. Um, they also are really, really nice about ordering what you need. So I had a, um, an actual counted canvas piece that I'm gonna start in the new year at some point. I don't know when. This is a Needle Delights Originals called Rosetto, and it's got boxes of a variety of specialty stitches. And this is ticking all my boxes right now because I'm just really into specialty stitches. So I was gifted this pattern by Trisha, Three Owl Threads. I won a, I forget what she calls it, but it's like a Christmas or end of the year giveaway that she has for the past couple years, and I won last year. And she gifted me this pattern and the Gloriana silk that this is based off of, uh, Flowers of Italy is the name of this silk, and then two DMC pearl cottons that the pattern calls for, as well as 18 count mono canvas with which to do it on. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I had been debating whether or not to use stretcher bars, which are typical of these patterns. Um, and I decided to go ahead and do it. I put some on my Christmas list on Amazon for my family to see because they're slightly cheaper on one, two, three stitch, but overall they're not that much more expensive on Amazon. And so I figured they'd be more likely to be purchased if they're on Amazon. Um, and I needed things on my wish list, So <laughs> figured why might as well, if I don't get them for Christmas, I'll just buy them myself on one, two, three stitch. But, um, I put those up there, so I'm planning to do this on stretcher bars, and I'll probably end up doing it like I did my Friends of the Library Kitty needle point piece that I did last week or the week before, where I'll prop it up on a table and, and stitch like that. And I think it'll be fine, but it'll be fun to do all these stitches. However, there's a whole bunch more threads than just these ones that Trisha got me, and I it's probably because the ones that she got me were the ones that are available for cross-stitching. So, I'll pull these out so you can see them a little better. So here's the pearl cottons that are DMC, 
and then the Flowers of Italy Glorianus 12, 12 strand silk, which is really pretty. Um, and I love Gloriana silk. I've used them in uh, my Chatelaine and in the Heirloom Nativity sampler. Maybe one other thing, but it's really pretty. I love the variegation that they have in a lot of the colors. So those were pretty, but I needed more. And I decided to go ahead and splurge on getting what was called for. There were a few solid colors that I probably could have subbed out for DMC or some of the hand-dyed cottons in my stash, but since it was it's a very coordinated look, and I didn't want it to be off. I like the shading to be off, um, and I wanted to try all these different types of threads too, because they would lay differently depending on what content, thread content, and how they're woven, you know, different things. So I thought, you know what, I have the money in my discretionary, I'm just going to go ahead and get them all. And I'm glad I did, because they're all very different than what I was expecting. I had, the, there was another Gloriana that was called for that's hard to get in cross stitch circles, which is Princess Pearl in the same color as the silk. So I'll show these back to back. The top one is the silk, it's in 12 strands, and then the bottom one is Princess Pearl, which I believe is probably a single strand that's very thick. Um, but they're the same colorway, so that's fun. That was definitely going to get purchased no matter what because I love the variegation. You can't you can't match that. And then they called for three Vineyard Classic silks, 30 yards. So these are huge, but these are very fat. So if I had subbed these out for um, um, threads, I would have been it would have been different. Like I would have needed two or three strands because this. This looks like a yarn, you know? So it's like very, very thick silk yarn. And so compared to the Gloriana's, they're very fat. It's a lot more, these are the DMC pearl cottons, you know? So they're a lot more com comparable to that. They, they look even fatter than a pearl cotton, actually. And there are, is a lot on here. There's 30, strength, 30 yards, so that's cool. I'll get to work with those, they're very soft. And then um, a bunch of what do you call these? Um, Rainbow Gallery things. So we had two Splendor silks, which again is a very fat silk in a couple different pinks. And then Water and Ice in a light pink. And it's like a, this is gonna be interesting to work with. <laughs> um, it When it's laying there, it looks a lot like a braid, like a ribbon, but it's fraying a lot. So I'll have to see what the best way is to work with that. And then we have Sparkle Rays, which again is like um, a braid. Where you can see. Let's see. There we go. So that's going to be given some sparkle as well as the water and ice. And then this one is Neon Rays, which is again a little um, flat, flat thing. So the way these are going to lay on the canvas will be very different than just if I had used regular cottons. So I have all of these long ones and let's see if I can do this. Fan these out for you. So I have got all of these. Um, and that's going to be really fun. <laughs> so now I have everything I need for, um, for this pattern and I'll start that sometime in the new year. Um, I've got, it'll be my first counted canvas design and I'm very excited. I'll put these all, um, yeah. we'll see. I might fix this later, so. But that was nice. I really like my local needle workshop. It's called Queen Anne's Stitches. And they have a Facebook page, not a regular website, but you can um, chat with them on there. Or And what I did is I emailed, you can call them or email them if you have things you're looking for. And I think they do ship um, to you as well if you needed that. But um, the price is really great. Um, I saved $10 versus the next, like, I found everything I needed on an online store 
So including tax and shipping, it would have been a certain price, and I, I paid $10 less than that by getting them in person in the store. So there was no shipping, and the overall cost of the items was a little bit lower as well. So win-win, um, <clears throat> and I'm supporting my local shop, so that was great. And yes, so I emailed them a list of everything that I was looking for, and she, one of the ladies there pulled everything for me, and there was one missing, so she ordered it, and it was literally, like I think I emailed her Friday or Saturday, and it was there the next, like, Tuesday. And Monday we didn't have, it was over Veterans Day weekend, we didn't have any mail on Monday. So it was there within like two days. So her vendors are awesome, I guess. Um, so it was that was great, um, great customer service, and I'm very happy with that. So that'll be fun to start. I also got my Color and Cotton Threads of the Month for October, which as as typical color and cotton, they're gorgeous. So here's these, I'll take them out for you. They're more, um, a little warmer in tone, which is appropriate for the fall. And I'm really enjoying them, they're really pretty. Um, again, a little bit more washed out than they really are, but this one, this one's a lot warmer it's, than it's showing. So I don't know, maybe it's better without that. It's a little bit a little bit brighter than that. Um, Autumn Gourd, which is fun. And, because it does look like, like a spaghetti squash or something. Serpentine. It's a lot greener than that. It's like a um, sea monster color, <laughs> which is nice. Um, Spanish Moss. Again, more bright or more warmy green than that. Hollyberry, just some nice variegation. It's a lot more dus dusky than this is showing. Not sure how to get good colors on here, but. And mahogany. I thought this one was pretty fun because it's like purple and brown. Um, so that's cool. I like all of those. Those are very pretty. So there's there's my color and cotton threads of the month. And I got, um, I get five five of the regular like all colors variety. So these are, I think she has three completely different sets. I'm not 100% sure, but based on what I've seen other people show, she has a primitive and a brights and an all colors. And I think that all colors are different from either the primitive or the brights. So like she has three completely different sets, but I could be wrong and it could matter based on if you get all 10 skeins or just five, I don't know. I could be totally, um, completely wrong about all of that, but we'll see. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. I enjoy the ones I get. So, and I had a gift card for the Fat Quarter Shop. So that I placed an order from them for the first time and got a lot of goodies. So the Fat Quarter Shop has a lot of things that are geared more towards beginning stitchers or stitchers who like more primitive styles. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know that neither of those things are true <laughs> of my stitching style. I've been stitching for probably 30 years and I like the more complicated things. So it was a little bit tricky to find things that were my aesthetic that I knew I would stitch. Um, so because of that, I found myself looking at fabrics and things as well. So I got one piece of fabric and then filled it out with some charts because the fabric was kind of expensive. So I took the fabric out of the bag so it's not crinkly for you. I decided to try some fabric flare fabric that they had. And this is a... Um, a little bit greener than that, just like the um, the flosses. It's not as blue, it's more green. It's like a greeny blue. But it's a, a fat quarter of mottled greeny blue fabric, which is really pretty. It is a printed fabric, which is why I thought it would be fun to try. This is 32 count Lugana, and I thought they don't have Mirabilia's on this site, but I can buy this fabric to use for Mirabilia. So potentially, I don't think I currently have a Mirabilia that is lacking fabric, but I have this for whenever the next one comes down the pike that I need to st stitch. <laughs> Could possibly be put on this. And the other thing I was thinking about is Garden Prelude that I got recently, and I'm kidding up with the color and cotton fabric at this point. I have that color and cotton fabric. I have another 
fabric that I believe was also from Trisha at Three Owl Threads in her gift package. Um, and this one that are all kind of greeny, like in the green blue range. And I love stitching on greens and blues um, for pretty much anything, really. But the fancy ladies, I think, look really nice on greens and blues. And so I can check her her dress colors, which are kind of a light teal, and see which fabric maybe she goes the best on. Um, I had picked that Wedgwood one from Color and Cotton that I got from Ann P. But in case it clashes with that, I can check the other two fabrics and see if either of those look better. So this could be used for a Mirabilia, which I'm excited about. And then I also got a variety of patterns that I am excited about. So the first one I got is the one my daughter will be stitching for her teacher. And it's called School Day Sampler by Trellis and Time. And she, as you know, is, she's almost seven and she's a very early stitcher. She's um, did, did one pattern on plastic canvas and now she's currently working on a little kit on 11 count Ada. And she's struggling with it right now because she's working on a little ball of yarn that's solid stitching with like 10 to 12 um, X's in a row and I think it's just too boring <laughs> for her. So I think she'll enjoy all the little bits in here that it won't be, like the biggest chunks are here. Um, I think I think she'll be a little bit happier with these smaller chunks of color because I think it'll be more interesting to keep her um, interested. I'm hoping she can finish that one before she starts this one so I don't uh, have her doing what I'm doing and have a million projects going. <laughs> so I've told her she can start this when she finishes the little kitty. Um, and I guess I can show that to you here and I'll go get that. Okay, I think I'm actually back. I did a whole bunch of talk in there. <laughs> And I wasn't recording. <sighs> okay, so I went to get my daughter's piece. Told you all about it already, but here I'll have to tell you again. This is her um, little kit I got at Joann's of a kitty and a ball of yarn. She loved working on the kitty, which she has a little bit more down here to do on the kitty, but she's currently working on the ball of yarn. And I'm making her finish a full string of pur purple before she goes back and does more kitty. Um, and she's kind of struggling with the, the monotony of that. But hopefully me showing it to you will spur her on to do more and being able to work on this new pattern will help her be spurred on to finish it too. So this is what it looked like when I showed you last time, maybe a couple weeks ago. And here it is now. I don't know exactly how far she may have gotten. She may have done a little bit more of this and then some of this. So it's really cute and it'll, it'll really pop once the um, back stitch is in as well. So hopefully when she she can get that done pretty quickly and then be able to move on to this one. And I have, this one is done on like tan fabric. I have, um, I have white 11 count that's just like the one in the kit that would be familiar to her, but this might be, um, because there's white things in here, it can be better on a different color. I have like a yellowy cream 14 count I think. I also probably have um, oatmeal colored Ada so we'll have to see what I have what might what she might like with this one. So this will be a gift for the um, teacher appreciation week which is in, in like April or May of this coming year so hopefully she can get that kitty done in the next month or two and get started. On this and I she's really ha excited to work on that so hopefully that will start happening soon okay gotta remember everything I wanted to say about these since I already talked about them so these are the other patterns I got from the fat quarter shop I got Jardin Privé and this in English is scissors and bobbins and it's exactly what it is some pretty scissors and alphabet there's like sheepies and houses and trees and flowers coming out of these bobbins and I thought it was really quaint and pretty for a stitcher or a sewer of which I am both um, so I thought that was cute and I can kit this up with random whatever I have in my stash fabric and fancy threads probably do some satin stitching on the bobbins maybe something more variegated for the letters or you know different things so that'll be fun to play with no plans to start any of these but um, They'll be fun to kit up with the flosses and things that I already have, so that's fun. 
This other one is a Madame Chantilly Star de Noel. And I thought this reminded me of my daughter because she loves kitties. <laughs> There's this little kitty down here who's got like a mess of string on him. And I don't like the color scheme of this one. The fabric is too light for the colors they've used in the first place. And it's not Christmassy enough for me. So I would probably change her to look more like my daughter with like not ghostly skin, normal peachy skin, blonde hair, purple dress. That top star might be um, yellow, but maybe the rest of these could be more green. These could be more festive, bright colors as well. So I would definitely change this up a little bit and probably change every color. And maybe the cat could be like a grayish brown variegated because that's what our cat is. <laughs> um, and then this other one I've liked for a long time. I've seen other people doing it and it has Santa Claus in here, which I'm not generally a fan of. Um, but I love the overall poem and all the little um, little pictures and I love that it ends with Christ. And so this is a Christmas one that I've always liked. This is a Silver Creek Samplers, uh, what's it called? My Christmas List. So it says, family visits, turkey dressing, woolen sweaters, Christmas blessing, flying reindeer, mistletoe, candles glowing, hot cocoa, pies and cookies, old St. Nick, peace and goodwill, peppermint stick, wrapping presents, gingerbread, hang, hang your stocking, time for bed. Angels singing, Christ is born, a gift for all on Christmas morn. And I, I just love that. I think it's really clever and cute and sweet and everything that I love about Christmas. Because <laughs> I even have, like, one of my favorite Christmas songs is the Christmas song by Nat King Cole, which includes reindeer and Santa Claus. You know, it's not like I avoid him like the plague, but I just generally don't like to decorate with Santa Claus because we know he's not real. Um, but... Overall, I love this too much to pass it up, and they had it, so I thought, you know, I gotta get it. <laughs> and then, because they had a, a limit or a, a threshold for free shipping, I went ahead and throw in some Bowen needles. These are size 26, so I don't know that I've ever bought Bowen needles or John James or any of those fancy. Um, I may have one because someone gave me one at some point, um, but generally I just buy DMC needles at Joann's or something, so... Um, but since I needed just a little bit to get me up over, I figured, eh, throwing some needles. Could always use some of those. So, whew, that's all my haul after I said some of that twice. Um, so, going into my, um, actually, first elephant in the room, we got a picture that complements another picture we have on the other side of this bookcase. And so, I shifted the angle of my video so that I'm sitting more crooked towards you, but hopefully you won't be as crooked to the wall. I've had a couple comments over the years of how everything looks a little skewed because of the way my camera angle is, but um, with this bookshelf, and it's still a little crooked, but I noticed when I set myself up, oops, sorry, the way I usually do, now that this picture is here, it looks really crooked, and I don't want to make you guys sick <laughs> trying to watch me. So I tried to make this more straight to the wall. It's still a little crooked, but... Um, it's better. So it's straighter to the wall and then um, I'm just crooked. So it's kind of the way it, we will try it this time. Let me know what you think. Um, okay, so this week, this past week, I was supposed to have, or I did have jury duty. We only have one week of a commitment and we check in every day during that week. It started out a slow or short week already because we had Veterans Day and the courts are closed on Veterans Day. So I only had four days I had to check in. But I was, you know, on unknown, unknown what my next day was going to be until after seven the night before, which is always, you know, kind of stressful because you don't really know what to, how to plan and what to do. But I didn't have to go in at all the whole day, the whole week. So that was really nice. Um, it was still very busy though. And I had lots of other things going on and I have a major family project that I work on every year for Thanksgiving and Ran into some technical difficulties this week working on that. So that's been frustrating and kind of made me not want to do anything, not want to stitch, just kind of felt very dejected and upset about this project. And so 
I think the pick, the projects I chose this past week were just not the right projects for feeling that way. They weren't easy. They weren't the, there was confetti. And I think full coverage is at least this past week when I was feeling stressed and not, I didn't want to really stress my brain too much more. Um, those full coverage pieces I had picked for this past week of challenges just weren't cutting it were making me lose my stitchy mojo and so I decided you know what just I'm just gonna drop them so I started out working on Villa Mirabilia and that was fine at the beginning of the week um and so I I'll show you what I did on her I think I already did a little bit on her before you before la the last video and I did a, just a little bit more to get my challenge done so this is what she looked like at, during the last video and here's the area now. We were supposed to work on this in the Enchanted Stitching Challenges Facebook group for um, the Day of the Dead bright colors that everyone wears. And so she's got lots of bright colors. And some of the colors you could work on were green and magenta. So in addition to the green that I did already right here that you saw, I did some of this dark green and then I decided to do some magenta. So some of these berries... I did all of the berries in this color. So there's no more berries of that color. There's two other colors of berries though, which is kind of amazing. I didn't realize that. Um, there's this lighter color and then a darker color that'll be in some of these darker places. Um, so I did 250 stitches total of those two colors, which was fun. And I will bring be bringing this back out for another challenge, two challenges this coming week. Because I anticipate this um, this week being just as busy as last week was with my project and I have various meetings and appointments pretty much every day this week um, except for today but now I'm filming so <laughs> there's that and I have a meeting in the evening so no stitching I may not get any stitching time today um, because of all of that I want to keep things simple this week so I'm trying, at first I decided there's two challenges, or there's four challenges in the en Enchanted Stitching group, and I decided to do two projects for all four challenges. So Villa Mirabilia will fit two of those challenges. She'll fit one that, something you've forgotten, um, because I started her ages ago, um, probably early 2000s and just kind of forgot about her because I was working on other stuff and I'm kind of a little more gung-ho on her right now. So she was forgotten and now I'm working on her again. So I could do a chunk of stitching on her for that one. And then there's um, uh, oh yeah a well-known designer because there was a there's a well-known singer in the movie Coco and so Mirabilia and Nora Corbett is a very well-known designer in the cross-stitch world. So I have, I really wanted to work on my um, Heirloom Nativity Sampler again, but Victoria Sampler is a somewhat well-known designer, but not like well-known. Like everybody knows what a Mirabilia is, even if they don't, haven't stitched one before. And even if they haven't, they've heard of Nora Corbett and it's, it's rare if you haven't heard of them. So I figured I'll just stick with that, do two challenges for that one. Um, so potentially I could get 500 stitches on that piece this coming week, depending on how much time I have. So, um, so we'll see. I've never done this before where I have to do two, two different prompts with the same piece. I know I have to take pictures differently, um, for each one starting a stopping point. My problem though is if I'm running out of time, um, I could do two sets of 50, or I could do two sets of 250. And, but if I'm running out of time, I won't necessarily have a picture after a 50 stitch chunk. So I could take a picture there and just not use it, but it's kind of a pain to take pictures. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Maybe I'll just go for the 250, and then if I can't get the second 250, it's no big loss, because two chunks of 50 is worth four points, and one chunk of 250 is worth five. So might as well just go for the, go for the big one, and then if I have time, I'll go for another big one or a small one. Maybe that's what I'll do. 
So one of the full coverage pieces that I was planning on doing this week, I did work on it a little bit, um, but only went to the small, the small challenge category goal. That's the one. So I worked on Quick Stitch Iris a little bit. Um, I was going to do like the bottom of the column and come up the top, but I just did some of the bottom of the column. There was a few colors that I could do that were, had lots of stitching in that color and I decided to just do those. There's this little patch of confetti and I said, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> My mental state is not ready for confetti right now. So <clears throat> I just didn't do it. So this is what that looked like last week and here it is now. So almost done with this column or this diagonal but you'll see this little patch right here is some yellow confetti and there's a little bit more down here too that's not done in that in that uh, section but that's okay. It looks like I did more than I you know it's not quite a hundred it was like 80 something maybe but 50 stitches will get you the second challenge um, goal. So I got two points for this. <laughs> Woohoo! But after that, I was thinking about the um, knitting, knitting Woman and La Soiree. And I looked, at, I pulled out their the patterns and I was just like, uh, I don't want to. So I figured I better not. Uh, um, I didn't work on those at all. And instead, I pulled out Heirloom Nativity Sampler again because it seemed... I could have pulled out Villa Mirabilia again, but because that fabric is so large and it's a little bit cumbersome, this one has nice skinny fabric, so I figured this would be easier just to pull out and work on a few stitches here and there and not be overwhelmed by it in any way. So, And I only had some green and white to work on, so it seemed very simple. So I managed to get... I plugged this in for... Something. I forget which one, but I, I switched out one of the other two. Oh, I think I could have actually used this for both of the challenges that I took Knitting Woman and um, the uh, La Soiree. Both challenges could, this could have fit for, but I ran out of time. So I only had time to do one of the challenges. Um, but I chose this for the one of where you stitch on something where you've made a mistake. And I chose the mistake to be, I made a mistake in thinking I could work on full coverage this week. Because I'm not in the mood for full coverage and it's killing my stitchy bug. So I'm going to go back to this one. That was my, that was my thing about being, making a mistake. I made a mistake and chose the wrong piece. The other one could have been backup singers for, or something to contribute to the music festival. And I said, well, these angels are singing Sweet Angels Sing on Christmas night, so they could be his backup singers. And so I could have worked on this again for that one, but I didn't have time. Um, so I did another, again, it was like 80 something stitches on this one. Um, so this is what it looked like last time. And here it is now. Just a little bit more done. I did this, oh, I did one color of green finished out these trees so there's a lighter shade of green in the trees and then this uh, more medium green was there and here and then along here and there's a little bit more in here too and then I think there's some more over here and then the rest is just white so that was nice to get a little bit more and I was hoping to maybe pull this out again this week it didn't really fit for anything um that I that had a challenge so I figured it was okay I just give it a week, take it, let it have a week off, um, and it'll be closer to Christmas by the time I work on it again anyway, so I figured it was okay. Because I definitely want to get into the specialty stitches soon. I'm itching to that. So, going forward, I'll do two challenges on Villa, Villa Mirabilia, and I think what I said before is what I'll do, I'll shoot for the first big challenge, 250 stitches, <clears throat> and then with remaining time, I'll do, I'll shoot for, you know, small or big of the second challenge, whether or not I think I have time for that. The other piece I'm going to do is because Sunday, these challenge, the challenges go through Sunday night. 
Sunday is the 24th, so that's the day of the month that I work on my son's piece, Dragon Ride, by Teresa Winsler. So this one can fit the prompts of work on something with bones, because a dragon has bones. Um, they, the Day of the Dead place has bone, everyone's a skeleton. So work on bones or things with bones. I don't have any things with bones, but and this is what I wanted to work on this week, so this this is what it's gonna be. And the oh yeah, the other one I can work on is something that you need that you're that you got help with. Um, because he gets a lot of help from Hector and his buddies. So um I said this one I'm getting help from my son because he's telling me what to stitch next. Because I'm I'm having he's my I'm consulting him and he's telling me, yeah, stitch on the head, stitch on the wing, stitch on this color, stitch on that color. So he's helping me by telling me where to, what to stitch next. So I thought that would work for him. And again, I'll try to get at least 250 stitches on this and then maybe another additional 50 or 250 depending on time. Because I figured that will keep things a little bit more simple to only have two main projects this week. And maybe I won't be so stressed. And neither one of them are full coverage. I like them both. So hopefully that will go better. And then I was checking Facebook because I was looking at this Enchanted, Enchanted Stitching Challenges stuff this morning. And realized that this weekend is the Full Coverage Fanatics Challenge Big Strides Weekend. Which is work on your largest full coverage project. And I thought, oh man. <laughs> I would normally be really excited and this is like the worst time for this. So I, I was, I'm tempted to just say, nope, not doing it. But when I pulled out the pattern, the column that's coming up next does have quite a few symbols that are used frequently. So potentially I could work on it without it completely annoying me. Um, I just won't choose the colors that only have a, you know, a stitch here and a stitch there. I'll just choose the the colors that are well known, uh, well, well, words, frequently used symbols in that column that's coming up next, and I think it'll be okay. And this, even though it's my largest design by stitch count, it's a vertical piece. So the since I roll my fabric on the horizontal, pieces that are horizontally oriented tend to be longer to hold on to and more unwieldy. So this one, while it's my largest piece, it's vertical. So the width isn't as obnoxious as some of my other ones that are um, wider. Because um, I have some that are a full yard wide. This one's not a full yard wide. So it's close. <laughs> oh, that's Villa Mirabilia. This is Flower Garden. Flower Garden it, by Heaven and Earth Designs is my largest project. I thought originally when this challenge started, I thought it was Empress Eugenie, which is the one, the golden kite one with all the all the elegant ladies in their dresses sitting around. Um, but it's not. I've cropped that one, and since I've cropped it, it's no longer my largest whip. This one is. So, this is by Emile Vernon, The Flower Garden, charted by Heaven Earth Designs. And I think it's really pretty, really whimsical, and not whimsical carefree, wind blowing, that kind of feeling. I'm up here in the mess of bush, but I've got the first two columns done on the first page and this third column looked a little bit more straightforward than the other columns had. So if I'm, depending on how I'm feeling, I may just go ahead and pull this out and see and work on a, a few of those major colors. So this is where it is right now. Um, so a good amount of confetti in these pages, but there were some decent frequently used symbols in this this third column, so we'll see. I'm, this is 28 count rose monaco, and I'm doing two over one half stitches. And I just realized I forgot to show you my dragon. I need to fix that. So this one may get some time over the weekend, depending on how my challenge pieces have been going and depending on how I'm feeling. So hopefully I'll have some interest in that. And here's my dragon, where he is at right now, for a before picture. And I believe, yes, I, I decided I was going to finish up 
this yellow goldy color that's got just a few more stitches in it and then he wanted me to work on this color um, which is also in this part of the wing and maybe a few other places so um, that's my plan next which I'll probably get to because there's not that many yellow of the of that particular gold symbol that I'd been working on not too many of those are left this is 28 count MCG textiles even weave two over two in most places and then the man is one over one so, and there's some beads up here too. Lots of fractionals, lots of blends. It's a Teresa Winkler. <laughs> so, um, that's that one. And so I almost forgot to show you my temperature pieces, but I'm still caught up. Woohoo! So that's one good thing that happened this week in my stitchy world. Um, so here's my temperature quilt. This is what it looked like last time. And... Here it is now. I'm so excited that I'm still I'm all caught up on this. I'm working on November. There's a few cooler days, getting warm, and then it'll be cool again. And it may even rain on Wednesday, which I'm really excited about. I finished out this block as well um, with the sashing color. And if I had had more time that day, I think I may have come over here and worked on this some more, or maybe this one of the, some of these chunks, because um, I have one more. A little over a day or three days ready right here um, but what I have been doing is I'll stitch what I used like like I had done earlier in the year I'll stitch like two days worth of sashing and then park it um, each day even if I have more time I'll just I'll do more but if I don't it's okay these are 28 count one over one on light blue MCG textiles even weave <clears throat> and my balloons are also caught up I think I worked on this one yesterday, so my balloons will be today. <clears throat> Here's the mock-up, and this is what it looked like last week, and here it is now. <clears throat> Yay! <laughs> I finished this row and got started on this row. Again, a few cooler colors, there'll be a couple hot colors and then they'll get cool again. And hopefully from here on out, it's supposed to be, it was in the 80s yesterday and maybe also today, but then I think the rest of the month is supposed to be 70s and 60s. So it'll hopefully get to be a little bit more fall here. And then I finished the string I was working on in the cloud. So if I get more time today after these two blocks are done, then I can pull out another string and keep working on that cloud, get that cloud done. Um, so that's really fun. I'm enjoying that one. And I'm really happy that I'm caught up. So, um, having fun with these. Looking forward to getting on with them and working on my tree next year. So, now back to your regularly scheduled programming. I think that's everything I have for you. So, hopefully this week will be a little bit less stressful than last week. I'm hoping that my family project will work this time and not the program I was using fritzed out and glitched and made like a week's worth of progress null and void and that was very frustrating <laughs> so I'm starting over and I'm saving in multiple formats as I go along and so hopefully things will be um, less traumatic <laughs> so I'll let you know um, next week how hopefully how things are going and stitchy wise and project wise and all of that so in the meantime have a wonderful week and enjoy your november and i will lord willing come back next week either monday or tuesday and let you know how i've gone on happy stitching bye <laughs>